In this country, America, there's actually a lot more women than men enrolling in graduate educational degrees. But what's weird is in STEM, even though there are more female graduates, they're dropping out of the field like leaves off full trees. We've got a real problem with sexual harassment in science and it happens because of the way that academic fields are structured. In science, women are vastly outnumbered and often outranked by men. But new research shows that this problem is actually a whole lot worse than what we actually thought. The size of the problem of sexual harassment in STEM fields is absolutely shocking. Take, for example, a survey by the American Astronomical Society. They found that 82% of women had heard sexist remarks from their peers. 57% had experienced verbal sexual harassment and 9% had been physically sexually harassed. Another survey by the University of Illinois found that almost two thirds of female researchers had experienced sexual harassment, generally at the hands of their more senior colleagues. A lot of this harassment goes unreported to university administration because the men doing the harassment are actually the ones who wield all the power over the women's careers. Another disincentive to reporting these harassment cases is that men often get a slap on the wrist behind closed doors and women end up becoming these pariahs. Let's have a look at just some of these cases. There's Jeffrey Marcy, a renowned astronomer who, after a campus investigation, was found guilty of serial sexual harassment over a number of decades. At UC Berkeley, it was only after several students leaked the story to BuzzFeed that he was finally punished and was understandably hit with a wave of criticism. He ultimately resigned. And then there's Christian Ott, a young astrophysics professor at Caltech. He fell in love with one of his graduate students and then fired her because of his feeling. And that girl wasn't the only one to draw his attention. When the female victims reported the cases, he wasn't fired, he was placed on leave for a year. Even though this story was made public by BuzzFeed, he'll still be allowed back on campus come July. Then there's Jason Lieb, a molecular biologist at the University of Chicago. He reportedly came onto a number of his junior students at an off-campus retreat. He also engaged in sexual activity with a student who was incapacitated by alcohol and thus unable to consent. He ultimately resigned after the university recommended he be fired. So as these cases stack up, it's becoming increasingly clear that we have a real problem with sexual harassment in science. Sexual harassment in this country is pervasive and we need the culture to change if we want women to reach their potential as scientists. And this isn't just about gender equality. Science can't reach its full potential if it doesn't include the whole breadth of human diversity working to solve the world's most pressing problems. Recently, both the UK and the USA have made gender equality and harassment policies more explicit. Having clear guidelines, punishments, and outcomes is the best way to get a more inclusive culture within the sciences. I understand there's a need for anonymity, but I wish that universities would publish the data about their policies and the number of cases that have been reported so they can be held publicly accountable. We shouldn't need to wait for journalists to shine the spotlight on more cases of harassment. It's time for individuals, departments, and whole institutions to make the commitment to wipe out harassment. But what do you think about the problem of sexual harassment in STEM and what do you think that we should do about it? Let us know in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.